If you are also struggling with Mother's Day, like I do right now, then this video is for you. This video is also a proof how much power you can get by being inspired by another crafty person in the internet. Hi, this is Luisa Heinzel. Thank you very much for joining me today. <sighs> Perhaps you can hear it in my voice. It's not my best day today. <laughs> That's because I'm struggling with Mother's Day. And when I go to social media and I went, and when I see all of those posts of really, really gorgeous makes like cards, journals, gifts for mothers, then I'm getting really, really sad because of some personal reasons. And perhaps it's the same for you. So I thought I want to make a Mother's Day video, but a little bit differently. I have a card here in front of me and I will create something today that will not become a Mother's Day card, but it will become something that you can perhaps also do while the other people are doing Mother's Day cards and other projects for Mother's Day. When I thought about making this video, I first thought, okay, let's just, let's just ignore it. Yeah, let's just ignore Mother's Day. I have my reasons why I can't create a special card for that day or something else. Let's ignore it. But then something happened. I was on Instagram and <laughs> I stumbled over this post here. I will blend in a photo so that you can see that better because I think here on my phone it's a little bit hard to see for you. I have seen this card made by Juliana Michaels and I fall in love with this card, even if this card says Happy Mother's Day. That was on the first hand a strange feeling for me and then I thought, okay, what is this post? What is her artwork doing with me in this moment? It gave me so much motivation. You know, I wanted to know if I'm able to create something like this. And seeing that in combination with Mother's Day and my personal problems, that was a really, really strange feeling for me. So, Juliana, if you are watching this video... Thank you so, so much for the inspiration that you gave me through your post. It's it's just amazing. And I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for that. And I also want to be totally honest to you. Also, speaking about the power which such a thing can give you. This is actually the second version of this video which I am recording. Yesterday evening... I have tried my first try on recreating this card with my own ideas in my own style, you know, but recreating this and I wasn't happy with it and I have thrown the card into my trash can because this is a really, really, really high level. Yeah, <laughs> let's address that. Juliana is such an amazing artist. She is such an amazing card maker and... I'm really in awe with her talent and I'm a really big fan of her as well as you can hear. She's a really big role model for me with making, with what she makes and how she is doing everything. And yeah, I wasn't satisfied with my first result, but this gave me so much motivation that I'm sitting here again and that I want to try it again. What I want to say is, if you see something and if you think, okay, perhaps I can do something similar, please just try it. No matter when it is, no matter if it's a day where you are struggling or no matter what it is, um, please just try it. And if it can't work for you in the first try, please try it again and don't give up. This is, for me, a really important message that I want to bring to you. And I hope that you can perhaps remember that when you are sitting on your craft desk and not on <laughs> at your craft desk and struggling with something. This video is also like a premiere because I want to follow Juliana's instructions from her blog. So I'm here on her Instagram profile and she has a link tree can just click here and then you can find here 
it says blog and there you can come to her blog and she has really gorgeous instructions really clear good to understand and here you can already see the card and when you scroll down you can see um, her card here so the blog article is named mother's day card faux bleach technique because she has made a special technique on this card which i also want to try today uh, again <laughs> but the bleach technique was not the problem yesterday but that doesn't matter and she gives you instructions here how to recreate such a card um, and i have to say i've never followed such a block article yeah with making my projects so this is totally new to me but i will give my best to try this so let's see what she uh, has written here what we shall do <laughs> let's try to do it just step by step like she has written it here in this amazing article so she writes there i began with a piece of distress watercolor paper so I have just cut myself a piece of this. This is Distress Watercolor cardstock. This is what I have available. So I am going to use this. And then she writes, uh, I stamped one of the images from floral trims onto it using black suit archiving. So the stamp she's talking about is this one. I have that as well. It comes from this set, Floral Trims CMS 461, from the new release by Tim Holtz and Stampers Anonymous. And she's talking about Black Suit Archival Ink. That's no problem as well. It begins relatively good today. <laughs> Let's see. <laughs> so I will take my stamping platform to help me stamp this um, image here to my card. And for some reasons, I'm lining up my card with this edge and this edge of the stamping platform. That will make sense in a second, hopefully, um, because Juliana has used some mediums that I don't have. And I have to find a way to manage this whole thing. Okay, so here we go. I will also leave my stamp in the platform exactly there where it was because i have a plan as i said juliana has used some mediums that i don't have and that's uh, some kind of a problem i would say so this is my stamped image oh, i just love this stamp <laughs> this stamp is just so gorgeous juliana has written I then ink blended over the stamped image using shaded lilac, dusty concord and villainous potion. I created a gradient from dark to light with villainous potion on the far left hand side, dusty concord in the middle and shaded lilac on the right. I guess that she has used distress inks in her blog article. She isn't writing anything about that, by, but I guess so, because she has stamped the image. And when you then go over that with oxide inks, you know, the stamped image will stay not so clear as it was before. Uh, that's why I think that she has used distress inks, but I don't have distress inks in those colors. I have mainly the, the oxide inks and only a few normal distress inks and i can't get like another color palette or something like that from the inks that i have that's the reason why i'm using the oxide inks so i'm going to start with villainous potion here on the left and because this is such a dark color or in also intensive color i'm going over here only a tiny little bit just like this to make sure that this gets not too extreme here on the edge. I can always like, you know, add more ink and get darker, but I want to make sure that I can later on still see my stamped image. When I tried this out yesterday, that was one of the problems that I had. So I tried to do a better job today. <laughs> So then let's use <clears throat> Dusty Concord next. 
and if you want to know it exactly and really you know honestly <laughs> I have realized that I've never uh, mm, that I have nearly never made something with a gradient and blending inks I'm <laughs> feeling like you know a total beginner with this because yeah I've realized that I actually have never done something like this and it feels really weird <laughs> I mean weird in a good way because I'm obviously <laughs> perhaps learning something new but <laughs> it's weird <laughs> so let's take the shaded lilac for here So then Juliana has written, I then took a water brush and removed the ink from inside the stamped image to create the faux bleach effect. I made sure to wipe off the brush frequently to prevent just moving the ink around and I used a paper towel to dab up the areas where I applied the water to help remove the ink. So I've prepared a paper towel here. And yesterday I experienced with my first try that it really helps when I use the brush of my grandma. <laughs> so this brush is like, you know, <laughs> special, really old and it comes from her. So this is just normal water and I have the feeling that everything that I do with this paintbrush gets a little bit better than without it. <laughs> so let's do this and try to remove the ink here oh I just forgot that I wanted to do something before this step oh my goodness I'm so sorry and that's something that isn't written in Juliana's post but here you can already see what will happen here but I just remember that I wanted to try something else before I do this step but it's not too late Louisa it's not too late just do it so um as you remember, I told you I have used Distress Oxide inks. And you can see that the stamped image is not so extremely visible anymore than it was before. It is not gone, but the black archival ink is like turned grey or greyish. And I thought what would happen, and it can happen that I will ruin my project again, what will happen if I put this ooh, come on, into my stamping platform again? And that's the reason why I left the stamp exactly here where it was. And mm, make the stamp a little bit wet. And then stamp to the card and remove the ink before I do the actual, you know, this technique with the bleaching. I hope that makes sense. So, um... I want to try to take a little bit of water in the spray bottle. I will protect my card here with the paper towel and then I will spritz carefully to my stamp. I'm first doing way too much <laughs> because then I can go around with the paper towel, remove the water from the platform itself and then I want to also remove a little bit from the stamp so that it's not totally wet but only a tiny little bit I hope that makes sense and then I mean we can always make it wetter yeah so um, that should be no problem so let's take that and just Press it down here. Oh, yes, 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 yes. I will wait a second and then take a dry paper towel. Oh my goodness, it's working. Ah, but this is not totally dry. Uh, give me a second, I will be back in a second. Here we go. This is a completely dry paper towel. So let's see, 
I will just, oh my goodness, that gives it such a cool outlined effect. And we can then later on still go in with the brush and bring some of the areas out a little bit more that we want to like pop out more. And I can already see that my black ink gets black again. Do you know what I mean? Because I'm removing the ink, the oxide ink from the archival ink now. And that's totally great that that works. So I will just spritz my stamp again because I want this effect to be a little bit more visible. That was a little bit more water, so I will just wait a tiny little bit. Oh my goodness, I'm in love. How beautiful is that? So we can then remove this and go on with the actual technique that Juliana has suggested. Um, where's my paintbrush? So I want to bring out um, this flower here in the middle a little bit more. And as you can see, this is what I have done before I realized that I forgot this step. And yeah, I want to try to get more ink off from this area here. But I also want to try to... <laughs> And that's not so easy to do that like a little bit irregular. Okay, so this is what I have so far and I'm totally in love with this effect. It's so, so great. Wonderful, just wonderful. And now let's see <clears throat> what Juliana has done next. I think if I remember that right, she has splattered some water. No, she didn't. Next, I took the script stamp. But where did she... Ah, she did the um, the water drops after the script stamp. Next, I took the script... Script... Oh, I'm so sorry. Script stamp from Exquisite and stamped just parts of it along the right-hand side using Hickory Smoke Distress Oxide Ink. Then I splattered the panel with water using a brush to create small water droplets and dried the paper. So this comes from the set reflections the number is cms <clears throat> i'm sorry 111 by stampers anonymous and tim holtz and this is normally meant to use on a gel plate to get i mean this is you know you can't read it and when you stamp it to your gel plate and then um take the print off you get it reversed mirrored do you know what i mean <laughs> But I don't care about that because I like that you can't read it because it's just for a background effect, just like this. Then it looks like this. I really like the hickory smoke on the um, shaded lilac because this is just amazing. It's just so backgroundish, really nice. So now I will take my splatter brush. I will make some tiny splatters as Juliana has done as well. Yep, 
here around this bigger flower. I want to have my splatters a little bit bigger as well. Let's see if that can work. Okay, so this is dry now and I'm really, really happy with the result of this. This looks just amazing. It's just, ah, <laughs> I just love it. So next, Juliana has written something about the stencil work. I've already taken out a stencil <laughs> and I have also taken out what she has used for the first step of her stencil work. And I will just read what she has written so that you can understand what my struggles are with this after that. <laughs> so <clears throat> I took the hexagon stencil from Mini Stencils set 55, she has written, and sprayed it with Villainous Potion spray stain and then a bit of water. I then placed some torn paper towels on my card front at an angle, creating a mask of sorts so that only the hexagon area would apply ink to the paper and not the solid area, uh, the solid border area. So the, she wants to make sure that this can't get to the card. Mm. I then dabbed over the stencil with a paper towel. I did this in the top left and bottom right hand corner. I then dried the ink with my heat tool. And after that she has inked the edges of the card with a bit of Villainous Potion Distress ink. And yeah, <laughs> as I said, this is already my second try of doing this. And when I did that thing with the stencil yesterday, I realized that I had not enough water after spraying the spray stain to my stencil but let's do one step after the other so I have here my <laughs> little <laughs> you know mask thingy um, I want to put this here so I want to make sure that this flower and that's also something that I haven't um, paid enough attention to yesterday I want to have this flower like really you know, visible in the end. So I don't want to have any of the stenciling uh, over that flower. Meaning, it can go, but I want to have it a little bit here. Yeah, uh, yeah. That's the struggle is real. It's really real. <laughs> so perhaps I should do this like so. So I will place the stencil here next to me so that I can spritz it without spritzing to everything and I just have to make sure that I spritz to the right place on the stencil that was also yesterday a little bit of a problem so I'm just spritzing it with a little bit of the uh, spray stain villainous potion and then I add water press here I have absolutely no idea, but uh, if that works, what I'm doing here, but what I can already see is that I will get not such a mess like yesterday. That's good. Oh, it worked. It worked a bit better on my paper here than there, but... <laughs> That is cool, but I don't want to let this like spread out too much. So I will just dry this first and then do the other corner. Yes. Aha. Okay. And what I also realize when I look at it now is that I want to have more of the bleach effect here and perhaps also here. Here on the top I like it really really much and it's also probably not such a good idea to go into that again now with a paintbrush um, because we have the stenciling here and I don't want to make um, this like ugly by smearing it. But <clears throat> here I have the feeling that the flowers don't come out enough yet so I will try to get a little bit more of the ink off here and there just with the same technique that I've used before 
Next, I will take my Villainous Potion Oxide Ink and go around the edges. But I will additionally take a tiny little bit of Hickory Smoke to go in with that here and there, only a little bit. And she has written that she has additionally put some uh, um, <laughs> translucent crackle paste through the stencil in those areas here where she has stenciled. And I've tried that yesterday with crazing medium because I don't have <clears throat> translucent crackle paste. Uh, but um, and that worked I mean technically it worked but the problem is that I have used distress oxide ink here and as soon as I put something on top that is like a translucent paste those areas where the paste gets become like really really bam and I don't know if I really want to do this here again, just have to think about that for a second. But do you know what? I think my problem yesterday was um, that the shaded lilac ink, uh, the oxide ink, turned into a really like weird purple in combination with the other colors. Mm, I have an idea and I want to try that. I got s so far now, so um, I want to try something and I'm realizing that I get a little bit like more brave <laughs> right now. Uh, where is my translucent texture paste? So mm, let me try to explain what I'm thinking right now. The contrast of my card is still not that much like on Juliana's card. I guess it's because ink and oxide ink. Uh, when I look to her card, I can see that especially those stenciled areas are way, way darker than on my card. Um, I can't get them darker by adding like more ink or something. It would be absolutely impossible to put the stencil on top here with more ink or a darker ink that can only end in a mess yeah so I, I guess so what I'm thinking is <laughs> using the texture paste translucent and putting that in the same way to the stencil so meaning not stenciling through it but putting that on top of the surface here and then pressing the stencil down so that the texture paste gets to the card in exactly those areas where the villainous potion ink is now and when that dries that gets way more intensive because of the translucent paste. It's not a crackle medium like Juliana has used, but as I said, I want to try my own things, so I will try to do that. It's hard to see how much is on the stencil already, but mm, I don't want to like. I don't want to have that like too much because yeah I don't want to have this like squishing out so let's take this back so that the texture paste can get there and that is not so easy <sighs> okay that looks weird, but let's see how it looks when it's dry. So I'm going to do the same thing here on the bottom. And then I am going to let that air dry. <coughs> okay, so this is dry now. It did not exactly what I wanted it to do. Uh, because I think I had a little problem in my brain uh, <laughs> because yeah that doesn't matter it is nice because it is nice because it has some more texture here and I think that's what Juliana wanted to create on her card as well having like a little additional texture like a little detail 
She also has written in her blog article that um, the crackle medium that she has used is not so extremely visible, but it is there. And that's, a yeah, I would say a tiny detail that matters and that makes the card more interesting. I mean, when you, you can feel it, you can see it when the light hits it. And I think that makes it more special. But what I want to do um, is, and that's something that Juliana hasn't done, I want to add some Distress Paint splatters here. Perhaps here and here, so that we get the Villainous Potion color here and here as well. And I'm hoping that I can get like a little bit more of this darker purple from the Villainous Potion. To the edges here. <clears throat> and I will also take another of these plates, press that into my paint, and just. Woo! Ah, not so regular! Ah! What the heck? Okay, do it with your finger. No! Ah! <laughs> I'm freaking out. <laughs> oh no! That's definitely not what I wanted. I just wanted to... Uh, forget it. <laughs> Let's do it like this. Let's just do it like this. That should work. We just I just wanted to have a little bit of the darker color here on the on the edge. How the heck can I solve that problem? Oh my goodness. That turned out way too regular. I will try to take some bubble wrapping. And do it like this because this is relatively, you know, yeah, that could work. Yeah, I think that's better. Okay, I can, I think I can live with that. So I will turn that around and try to get a similar thing here because otherwise it looks totally strange if it's only there on the bottom. What do you think about that? Is that too much contrast now or is it exactly the right amount of contrast? Ooh, my goodness! <laughs> Holy crap! Okay, so here we go. As you can see, I've mounted the card to a white base. I've just sewn around here with a black thread with my sewing machine. And now I want to decorate this card a little bit. Juliana has used some die cuts cut out from vellum. I have some here also cut out from vellum. These come from this set by Tim Holtz and Zizix. The number of this set is 664163, if you want to check that out. And I have cut out this one and two of these to have some options. <laughs> and I also have taken out some paper dolls because I thought I want to break this area a little bit. Um, my stenciling and also this paint around here got a little bit for my taste too regular somehow it's like do you know that looks a little bit strange so i thought perhaps we could either take these i really really love that especially because of the flower here in the background that makes it really harmonious and it breaks this regular look a little bit but um it also covers up a lot <clears throat> of this area here and I'm not totally sure if I like that then I have taken out this woman here she's a little bit um, slimmer 
I mean, <laughs> the image is slimmer than the uh, both of the children. Um, yeah, I also like that. <laughs> I have problems now. <laughs> I really have problems. I've also taken out these little guys. I have them left over from another project. These are also die cuts by Zizix and Tim Holtz. And I thought a little bit of white could be perhaps also not so bad. I have this quote, keep some room in your heart for the unimaginable. Ooh, you can't see it, I'm so sorry. And I want to include that somehow. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> that are the options. Yeah, that's way better. I think that's way better. It's, I mean, it covers up a lot of the background, but I think that this color of the image fits way better than this. It's weird somehow. Yeah, I think I will do it like that. So I will first... I don't need this whole thing, so I will first take only this and some collage medium and glue this to the back of the image here. Let's decide where to put this and we also have to, to decide where to put the quote because I want to have the children standing on the quote so I think it's the best thing to just um, glue the quote first like this so that we then can decide where the children can go later can someone please call me and tell me if this is a good idea or not <laughs> When I had the children and the vellum flowers there, I thought, this is done. And I really like this. But when I take these and put them here, I have the feeling <clears throat> that it makes <laughs> this whole thing even more interesting. And at the same time, I think perhaps it's too much. I am still not sure what to do. I think I don't like this so much. This looks a little bit kitschy in my eyes. Um, <laughs> but I'm not totally sure if I want to leave it like this. Um, or if I want to, for example, put only one flower somewhere, but I can't find <coughs> like the right position for that because... This is already like balanced in my eyes. Mm, let's see. I want to add some white splatters here to the bottom to also like connect the children to the background a little bit better. And perhaps. That is then already enough. Oh, I think so. Just like that. And I think, no, it doesn't need the white flowers anymore. But what I'm thinking is, if I want to perhaps add something here, like a little tab, and I have something in mind that I had... Oh, I just found it the other day here and that is this thing this comes from a pillowcase and I just thought if I can perhaps attach this here somehow because that is white as well and that would give perhaps a little bit of interest here so this is my finished project for today I hope you like this card as much as I do I'm really happy with how this turned out thanks to Juliana Michaels for this gorgeous inspiration and for a really great experience that I had with this card and with the techniques on this card. If you want to check out Juliana's social medias, please check out the info box. I will link everything down below for you so that you can check that out, read her blog and follow her wherever you want.
Have a very great day. Thanks for watching and see you the next time. Bye bye.